All right, so I'm gonna do another one of my patented desktop whiteboard videos. Uh, no cat in sight yet to ruin this one, so hopefully we'll be good. So what I wanna uh, sort of discuss visually is this idea of selection sort. Um, and actually there's a really neat uh, sort of parallel between insertion sort and selection sort. So let's, let's review insertion sort, and we'll use this to kind of get us started, okay? So insertion sort, I've got an array here. Uh, I'm gonna set it up with eight values, right? And let's imagine, I'll just put some random data in here. Um, okay, so insertion sort, both selection sort and insertion sort build a sorted portion of the array from the left moving to the right in every step. What's different about it is insertion sort always starts with the same value from the unsorted and then needs to find where to put it in the sorted part. So in insertion sort, so, so let's take a step of insertion sort. Okay, so I start with uh, the value three and then I take two and I'm inserting two into the sorted part of the array. And so in this case, what I would do is I would swap uh, two and three and I would end up, okay, so now my sorted part is, is two values. Now I take four, in this case, four is already in the right part. And so I, I just leave it where it is, seven, okay. Now, it, when I would get to zero, what would happen is I'd have to take zero, compare it with seven, compare it with four, compare it with three, compare it with two, and I would insert it there, and all these values would move to the right. And so what you'll see is in every step, I'm taking, uh, I, selecting the value from the unsorted part is constant time, because I'm always using the value from, the leftmost value from the unsorted part of the array, and inserting it is O-N, because I don't know where it goes, okay? But what if we, flip this around a little bit, right? What if instead of saying, I'm gonna choose, I'm always gonna choose a particular value from the unsorted part and I won't know where it goes. What if I choose a value from the unsorted part that I know where it goes, okay? And, and this may seem a little mysterious. Let me put a slightly more interesting value in here, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're trying to sort in ascending order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the minimum value from the unsorted part. Now, what's cool about that? Well, if I pick the minimum value, I know where it goes in the sorting part, okay? So let's look at this again. So I start my sorted part, same thing with, with one value. So now I'm, I'm choosing the minimum of this set of values. This is the unsorted part of the array, the sorted part's over here. What's the minimum, right? The minimum in this case is this value, negative one. Where does it go? So choosing the minimum is ON, but now I know exactly where it goes because it goes at the right. Um, you know, oh, sorry, wait, hold on. I actually have to start with the whole array. <laughs> okay, so yeah, in, in selection sort, we start by choosing the minimum of the entire array. Um, the minimum of the entire array, in this case, is negative one, right? What do I do with negative one? Well, I know where it goes. It goes here. And so in this case, I'll just swap the two. So I have a step that chooses the minimum, and then I have a step that swaps the minimum with the location it, 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 that it's supposed to go in. And so selection sort, the idea is that the process of finding the value is ON, but then I know exactly where it goes. So let's do another round. Okay, so now I do the same thing as insertion sort where I'm, I'm building the sorted part of the array from the right to the left. Now I pick the minimum of all, all these values. What's the minimum here? Zero. That's ON. Where does it go? It goes here. That's constant time, right? So I'll just swap these two, right? So zero goes here, three goes here. And now my sorted part just got one unit bigger. Same approach, minimum of all these values, two. Two turns out in the right spot, right? Okay, so I don't have to do any work, that's nice. Minimum of all, of all these values, three. Three also, I'll swap three and seven because three is gonna go here, seven's gonna go here. You'll notice that I'm always swapping it with the value that's to the, you know, the, the first value in the unsorted part. That's how I grow the sorted part by one value. And if I repeat this process, you know, I'll put five here, that'll move seven here, I'll put six here, that'll move 10 here, and then actually at that point I'll be done, seven and 10 are in the right spot. So insertion sort, finding the value is constant time, because I always pick the value with the right, uh, the leftmost part of the unsorted portion inserting it is ON, right? So it's kind of like insertion, let's write this down. Insertion, this is why I don't do whiteboard stuff because my hand, handwriting is terrible. Find 
is O1 insert is O N. This is probably helping nobody. Um, selection finding is O N because I have to find the minimum or the maximum depending on how I'm doing it. Inserting is O1. And so there's kind of a nice parallel between these two. In insertion, I do the work inserting the value to figure out where it goes. In selection, I do the work finding the value. I find a value with a specific property, namely that it's the minimum value, and then I know exactly where it goes in the sorted part of the array.